Hi, today we're going to talk about how to make something wait or run for a specific time using the concept of timers. It's a common misconception that timers or pausing requires you to use the sleep function from threads. This is incorrect. Using threading concepts such as sleep on the main thread will not work correctly. Raylib is not an engine like Unity or Godot and there is not a background system that runs the game and checks for input. If you sleep in the main thread, nothing will happen in that thread. That includes no drawing, no input, nothing. Windows will actually think your application is crashed or locked up. In games, we have a game loop that needs to keep running every frame. Even if the game isn't doing anything or is waiting for something, the game loop must still run. So we're going to explore the concept of timers showing how to keep this game loop doing things while we wait or process things for specific amounts of time. Raylib does not have timer functionality built in, but it has two functions that will help us manage time. GetTime returns the total time since the game has started. GetFrameTime returns us the delta time since the last time a frame was drawn. These are the only two functions we need for any kind of timer in Raylib. To start with, we have a very basic Raylib sample. It initializes the window and has a loop that draws nothing. Our goal here is to make it so that we can click on the screen and have a red ball move either to the left or to the right for two seconds and then stop moving and disappear. To start, we're going to need some data to store our timer and some functions to work with them. A timer is just some sort of time span, so we're going to store a float for a lifetime. We're going to store it in a struct just because we might use other things later. We need a function to initialize our timer, so we have a start timer function. It's going to take a pointer to the timer because it's going to modify the timer. If we didn't have the star here, we wouldn't pass in a pointer to the timer. We'd be passing in a copy to the timer. This function would then modify the copy of the timer and throw it away, leaving our original timer unmodified. So that's why we use the star. Uh, the we have a check here to make sure that no one passes in null because that would be bad and cause our app to crash. If the timer we get is valid, we set its lifetime to the lifetime. Next, every frame we need to update the timer to make sure that it isn't expired. So we have an update timer function. Again, we're passing in a pointer to the timer for consistency. We make sure the timer pointer is not null and that it's not expired. It's expired when its lifetime is less than zero. Uh, if so, then what we do is we subtract a little bit of life from the timer. We use get frame time to figure out how much time has been since the last frame, and we subtract that little bit of life from the timer. Once it reaches zero, we know the timer is done. Because of that, we have a little function here called timer done that takes a timer. It checks the timer to make sure it's um, alive. If it's less than or equal to zero, our timer is done and we return true. Now we're going to add some data for our ball. We've got how big our ball is, how fast our ball moves, where our ball is right now, and what direction our ball is going to move in. We also want to know every time we make this ball be alive, how long will it be alive for, so we call that ball life. Then we need a timer for our ball. We'll call it the ball timer. We're going to initialize our ball timer to zero so that everything in it is set to zero. Next, we're going to check and see if the user has pressed the mouse button. If they have, we want to set the ball's position to where they clicked, and we want to start our timer. Start timer doesn't care what the current state of the timer is, so we can pass in our timer, even if it's alive, and it will reset the life back to our current lifetime. The next thing we want to do is update our timer. So we pass in our timer to this function. Notice in these both cases, we use the ampersand in front to say that we're passing in the address of our variable, not a copy of our variable. The last thing we're going to do for our update section is update the ball if it needs to move. So if our timer is not done, we want to add our direction and our speed to our ball position. This will make it move in whatever direction it was moving last time. This code here checks the ball to see if it's gone past the left or right side of the screen. If it has, it makes sure that it's within the screen and reverses the direction. 
you'll note that we only do this when the timer is not done. So we're only going to move the ball while the timer is alive. Once the timer ends, the ball's position will not be updated. The last thing we need to do is draw where the ball is. Again, we only want to draw the ball if it's alive, so we draw it while the timer is not done. We draw the ball at its position and make it red. Then when we run our game, we click, the ball moves for two seconds and then stops. We click again, the ball moves for two seconds and stops. If we click here, it'll bounce, still move and stop. When we click it again, it's going to continue moving in the last direction it was, but it's only ever going to go for two seconds. This is how we use a timer. We simply run the game loop and check the timer every time to see if it's done or not. There's no need to pause or do anything fancy with threads. You just keep track of how long something's been going on. I'll have a link to this code in the description of this video, and I hope this was helpful.